All right, everyone, this is Alfred. So now I'm going to talk about Subdivision and Dynamesh. So I'm going to show a video by uh, ZBrush Call to show you the two different docs over here. One is a Subdivision doc, another one is a Dynamesh doc. I have two dogs here in the scene. The blue dog is a subdivided model. So if I have the blue dog selected, I can go to the Geometry tab over here, and you'll see he consists of three subdivisions. So I can scroll up and down his subdivisions here to get the lower resolution version of the dog or the higher resolution of the dog. The red dog is a Dynamesh dog. So this dog consists entirely of ZBrush's digital clay. So the Dynamesh lives in the Geometry tab underneath the Dynamesh area. And in here you can see this dog has Dynamesh active and it has a resolution of 512. So both types of models here are gonna allow you to achieve a sculptural result inside a ZBrush core. There are some things you can't do with subdivided models that you can do with Dynamesh. And then there are some things you can't do with a Dynamesh model, but you can do with a subdivided model. So to start off, let's just look at the subdivided model. So let's say with the dog here, I want to start pulling some shapes off the back of the model here. So I go down the bottom here and select the move brush and then come across the model and hold down S to get a larger draw size here. And I'm just gonna start pulling his back out a little bit. So something like this. Now you'll notice that I'm getting this stretching now with the mesh, since I'm pulling the topology of the model up. So if I was to come back through on the blue dog here and select the clay tubes brush, select a small draw size here, and then sculpt from the dog's neck to the back here, you're gonna see that stroke is gonna depreciate. And this is because when I started pulling the surface of this model out, I've stretched the polygons that make up the model. Now with a subdivided model, you could come in and attempt to smooth this out, to get a smoother surface, but you're restricted to how many polygons are in that area. So you could come to the Geometry tab and divide this up again to increase the resolution of your mesh. And this will then come through and start smoothing out that area. However, when you do this, you're going to increase your polygon count. So if you start making large changes to a subdivided model, you're going to have to divide the model quite a bit to increase the topology in those areas to allow you to sculpt. Now, if I go to the Dynamesh dog here, and I do that same process. So I'm just gonna to come to his back, and I'm just gonna start pulling his back out. Now, as you see, when I start getting to those stretched areas like this, I can simply just hold control and drag off the model and release, and it's going to re-Dynamesh that mesh. And this is now going to give me even topology across that surface. So I could come in with a small draw size, a smooth brush, and the clay buildup brush, and get a consistent stroke all the way. So Dynamesh's main function is to generate forms and silhouettes on your model. If you already have an established silhouette, you can simply bring that into ZBrush and then subdivide it and sculpt on it like the blue dog. Another option that the Dynamesh model will allow, but a subdivision model will not, is the ability to use insert mesh brushes. So if I come down here and select this IMM primitives brush, and I come across the Dynamesh dog here and drag this out, I'm going to be able to insert these shapes. If I select the blue dog and I come across and try to drag an insert mesh brush out, I'm going to get a warning that the mesh is composed of multiple subdivisions. So you're either going to have to delete the subdivisions on this model to use insert mesh primitives or convert this model to a Dynamesh. Another thing that Dynamesh does that a subdivided model will not, it has the ability to fuse. So with my dog here and those insert mesh objects, if I re-Dynamesh this mesh now, it's going to take those insert mesh objects and it's going to weld it to the surface of the dog. So if I smooth these out, you can see they are fully attached. If I was to take a primitive and append it to the subdivision dog, the subdivision dog and that primitive would remain separate geometry islands. Another okay, so I'm gonna stop the video here. Uh, you can check out the full video in the link in the description. So just go back to my notes. So a summary, uh, subdivision model and the Dynamesh model both have its pros and cons. Uh, so the advantage of subdivision model is the flexibility you go up and down the subdivision levels. It has good control if the main silhouette of the shape of the model is already in place where you don't need the freedom to freely adjust the model. Then it would be really good if you do a subdivision model. And then uh, you also may not need to do retopology methods at the end of it because you can just go up and down the subdivision levels, you know. So the advantage of Dynamesh is it has way more freedom 
and creative sculpting is very fun to play with. If you are exploring the main silhouette and the form, you can always just start with Dynamesh and then you don't need to worry about the poly count and the, how the mesh is being created. You can keep sculpting, re-Dynamesh, always able to re-Dynamesh on and on and on again to re-mesh the area, even if there's an error or even if the topology is not pretty. By doing a re Re dynamesh it will recreate the, the topology on that whole model and then you will be able to uh, easily have more fun with your sculpting and just sculpt on top of it and then re-dynamesh again and then just sculpt on top of it again so um, you will realize this is uh, very handy as you play with it more and then also another advantage is uh, dynamesh you can use IMM brush whereas uh, subdivision you cannot use IMM brush so that's a disadvantage here so other disadvantage of a subdivision model, it's not easy to recalculate an area to make the mesh clean again. So you probably have to uh, use uh, other methods like you retopologize the whole thing or you have to... Um, and another disadvantage is that you will be a bit more restricted. You have less freedom. So it feels a bit more like you are already in polygonal sculpting, like uh, it's already limited. But also because of that, the the subdivision levels where it goes up and down, when you really have the full control of it, uh, you will be able to keep the poly count more reasonable. Okay, so the disadvantage of Dynamesh is that uh, you don't have the flexibility to go up and down the subdivision levels. And depending on the needs, you might need to retopologize your model when you fully created it, you know, you can make a super beautiful model, but it could be the poly count that is very high. And uh, it's okay, it's probably uh, okay to start out like this as well, but we will teach you more as you go along how to retopologize and uh, make a lower poly of your model as you go further. So the retopology process is also a little bit time consuming, but it's very commonly used in the professional pipeline, very uh, highly professional. Okay, so just want to go through a little bit more about subdivision. So under tool geometry, so if you close the uh, sub tools tab, and then you, you will see the uh, geometry tab just below it. Uh, shortcuts are Control D. You can divide the mesh. Press D, you go up one subdivision level. You press Shift D, you go down one sub subdivision level. So the smooth SMT on or off will add the smoothing to the division. Okay, so let's uh, have a look like. This. So many. Let me look. Load up a dog. If I have a dog here, I go and look at my geometry level. So if I look at my geometry level, currently I don't have any any place where I can press up or down. So I can just press uh, divide, and then I'll have more and more subdivision level. So I divide once. I have two subdivision level. Divide. Few more times, I have four subdivision level, so I can go up and down the subdivision level. If I go down, it's uh, eight thousand poly. If I go to the highest, it's four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand poly. Okay, so press the uh, shift D to go down. Press D to go up. Shift D go down. D to go up. And then, as you can see, this SMT that is on, it will just apply another smooth over here. Because there may be times where I don't actually want to apply a smooth, I want to keep the surface totally hard. So if I were to do that before, let me go all the way down and then I delete higher so that I can redo this. So now I'll do it subdivide without the smooth modifier on. Subdivide, subdivide, subdivide. You see, there's no difference. Just now it was so smooth, but it's the same thing. I'm on subdivision level 4, but by having the smooth off, I will not let it smooth anything. So sometimes if I'm doing a belt or maybe I'm doing a sword, very hard surface objects, I want to keep it sharp, I can purposely not on it. Okay, if I want to keep it on, I can start divide the next level and then you start to smooth it. But you get more and more difficult to smooth because now the resolution is way too high. So if I want to smooth it, I should have done it way before. And then I did it higher. Maybe now starting out smooth it, you know. If I want it to be smooth, I should do it at level 1. And then it will be entirely smooth again. Alright, so that's for subdivision as the basics. As uh, Dynamesh, you can look under 2, Geometry, Dynamesh. 
So know that the geometry size as well as the dynamic resolution will also determine the shape of the model. So by default, ZBrush actually likes the size of geometry size of two. So uh, it's recommended that once in a while you go and check your size, you set a model size to two. Okay, how do you find that? You go under two geometry size, and then you will see the x y z size. And then the when the size is two, and you set the dynamic resolution to be two hundred forty. And then you can slowly go higher from there. That's where you set the resolution based on this. If your size is way larger, then the, when you set a resolution of 240, it may be too big. You know, the, the way the geometry uh, reflects, uh, it affects the resolution is different. So you, you're, you will find that your resolution is not a one-time magic. You know, sometimes in your project, you will like resolution of 240 and sometimes in your project you go resolution up to 800 or 1000 and then you'll be like hey why is it so different it's because your size is different your geometry size is different so if you keep the geometry size similar like the geometry size of two it will be pretty accurate so let's have a look at my dog right now I'm curious about the size so you see the default uh zebra size is two Okay, so if I were to delete this uh, subdivision again, so if I want to delete all my subdivision, I just go back to level 1, delete higher. So now I'm back to 8000 subdivision. So my size is 2, I can go to Dynamesh, and then I can pump up my resolution. I also have it here on my object, uh, I mean in my interface, I keep our interface over here, where we can set the resolution and Dynamesh on top so because we'll be doing dynamesh quite frequently so we just keep this over here so if i set to 640 you need to click on dynamesh again so that it will actually run the dynamesh so you see that just now there was a loading bar here that was loading my computer is pretty fast maybe you didn't see but uh, it actually remeshed it so you see that the points is now different and it's 200,000 polys advantage of uh, dynamesh if I press a shift F to look at my wireframe, uh, if I stretch my model a lot, you know, this is, looks pretty disgusting right now, but Dynamesh will solve it for me. So if I put like 500 resolution, I press Dynamesh, see, you would solve this area for me. Then I can just hold down shift to smooth it and I can re again. So, so technically I can shape however I want, I can bring back the, the silhouette as much as I want. I can recreate my model. I can be creative. I can make this into an alien. I can make this into anything I want. As long as I, uh, I redynamize it, I will solve all the stretching issues. And it's very important. It's very important you learn to have fun in ZBrush and be able to just not deal with stretching issues. It makes things so much more fun. So for a long time, I was actually just playing with ZBrush and uh, Dynamesh. You know, just let it have fun with uh, all these polygons and how it recalculates this area. Because if I were to not let it recalculate this area, I wouldn't be able to sculpt. See, I wouldn't be able to sculpt. But if I were to just let it redynamesh, redynamesh, magic. Now I can sculpt again. Magic of dynamesh. Okay, so I uh, hope you guys understand better about subdivision and dynamesh. And then uh, see you guys next time. Bye.